Welcome to the director's cut of Poker After Dark. I'm Shauna Hyatt. This past week, six former World Series of Poker champions each bought in for $20,000 and sat down for an exclusive game of No Limit Texas Hold'em. This week's table was nothing short of epic. Everywhere you looked, you saw a World Series of Poker main event champion. In 2003, Chris Moneymaker, whose name and game changed the face of poker forever. In 06, it was Jamie Gold who bested a field of over 8,700 players to win $12 million. Hall of Famer Johnny Chan, winner of back-to-back -back titles in 1987 and 1988. Chris Jesus Ferguson, his brilliant poker mind and mathematical skill earned him the hardware in 2000. Doyle Brunson, a true poker legend and back-to-back -back winner in 76 and 77. And El Matador, the 2001 champ, Carlos Mortensen. This type of tournament is a sit and go, six people, and with six people short-handed, so you're gonna have to play a lot of hands, and the action's gonna move fast, the blinds go up quickly, so in the very beginning, you know, you sit back and you wait a little bit trying to get some hands. And as the blinds increase, you have to start making some hands and you have to start being creative and being aggressive. You have to play, uh, just play your card. I don't think there's any real strategies to start with, but down toward the end, uh, there might be, but I think you just have to play normal poker uh, at the beginning. And this is all world champion players so I played with them, most of them, for many years. So uh, uh, the difference is I know how they play. In the cash game, you never know who you're going to pick up. I think in a field like this, where everyone's a uh, world champion, uh, come on, I don't think there's going to be much uh, money to be made early in a tournament. It's always better to play behind than to play in the front. No limit. <laughs> That's all about no limit. Because there's no prize for second or third. It's either win or go home. On the very first hand of the week, Chris Ferguson and Carlos Mortensen tangled when Chris had ace-jack and Carlos had pocket queens. When the flop came with an ace, Carlos lost almost half his stack. This was literally the very first hand of the tournament. Chris Ferguson was on the button with the blinds at 1 in 200. Well, uh, we get the deal the first hand. I'm in the big blind. I, have, I get the deal pocket queens. Chris Ferguson is in the bottom and he raised 600. I've actually never played with Chris Ferguson before, but I admire him and I respect him, and he's amazing. Carlos, he, this, he is uh, very aggressive, very dangerous. He's unpredictable. He have his own style, which is uh, fits in all style. Right, so I raised him back like, 2,000 more. Yeah, I played with Chris Ferguson many, many times. You know, he has always uh, his glasses on, his moves. He just take a time before he acts every time. So that works very good for him. Carlos Mortensen bet 2,600 in the dark and found himself in serious trouble when Chris Ferguson spiked an ace. 
Well, I, I bet blind 2600 before the flop is count. So Chris raised me to 6000, 3400 more. First hand. These guys don't waste any time. Carlos wasn't quite ready to quit on those queens, and he would make it 10,000. Let's make it that. Make it. Gonna make it twelve, I think. Yeah, I like playing with Chris. Uh, Chris is a very good player. He's, I think, he's probably come further with his game than almost anybody. Uh, he was kind of a rank amateur. You know, when he won the world championship, he wasn't nearly as a polished a player as he is today. Carlos's re-raise had put the decision right back on Chris. First hand, gentlemen. Yeah, it was pretty exciting going in on the very first hand of the match. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I had the pair of aces with the jack kicker. I was hoping that was good. I wouldn't have liked it, but uh, he could easily had a better hand. But it's not the case. <laughs> I played too aggressive and raised back to 10,000, 4,000 more. And he just moved on me. Where's Sean? I need to know who's going to win. Hope that's a full runner of events to come. Fast. All right. Say he's going to be fast, right? Yeah, we, we all said <laughs> we're playing fast. <laughs> First hand, all in. Who's gonna win? No. If I was in, I wouldn't be here talking to you. I know. <clears throat> all right, how about this for a first hand? This is unbelievable. They're raising, re raising, going over the top of each other. It's amazing. First hand. So you're an aggressive player. Are you surprised by this? No, I thought I'd be the first one to double up or go home. <laughs> but this is amazing. I have a feeling that this is gonna be. You know, something we see a lot of in this match. This will be a real fast game. We're all we're all pretty aggressive players, so I have a feeling. Uh, yeah, this thing could be over real quick. There's no penalties here, right? Taking a half time. Not that I know of. With Chris Ferguson all in, Carlos's tournament life hinged on this decision. Chris, that are no good. Eh? And down went two queens. Late Carlos Fulbert. I don't know what he had. He could have had ace, king or ace queen, uh, and then uh, knocked me out of the tournament. But uh, fortunately, he didn't. I say this. This game is gonna be fast. Yeah, it was fast. Yeah, I feel a lot of heat to my left here. That's it, I, I get the other like 7,500 left, so I can't do it anymore. What did I have? Any check? That's why you're so good. That's why you're a world champion. Welcome back to the director's cut of NBC's Poker After Dark. With the blinds at two and 400, Carlos Mortensen found himself on the button and the short stack. Maybe. 
maybe this is the next one. Anyways. Raise all in. There's two and four down there, gentlemen. Yeah. I sent uh, the blinds is two and four hundred. Everybody falls. I'm in the button. I have a ace deuce. I have only twenty five hundred left. So I move on in. And Chris Moneymaker is he has ace ten on the small blind and calls me. It's easy call, you know. He's only twenty five hundred. He has to call twenty three hundred more. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. Ace you have ten dudes? Ace dudes. No, ten dudes now. Ace dudes. I feel lucky tonight, so. Carlos needed help. Quack, quack, quack. Quack, quack. And favor, I have his ace of spades. Oh, See, one more deuce. A lot of split cards. <laughs> Willing pair, nine, or double. I think this is a good guy. Wow, none across. It's a little too Deuce, close. Deuce is paid. <laughs> Man, a little too close. Come on, the Deuce is paid and stuff. All right. He's a ace stand hold up. I'm getting that count. <laughs> nice play with you guys. With Carlos Mortensen eliminated, yeah. the field was now Good down luck. to five world it. champions playing for $120,000 and bragging rights. It's not my night. I don't think I played good today. And, all right, that's poker sometimes. You don't play well. Just a few hands later, with the blind still at two and four hundred, Jamie Gold got involved. Ten, I felt like the blinds were getting high enough that I needed to start playing and I needed to start catching some cards. So I played the three four. Um, it's an interesting hand, and I like playing that hand. I just limped with it, nobody raised, so it made it very easy for me to be in there. Yeah, that was the first time I played with uh, Jamie Gold. It was, uh, I thought he played great. He loves putting pressure on his opponents, uh, but he's not gonna put too much pressure on this crowd. These guys know, these guys have played against everybody for a long time, so, you know. But of course, it's very hard to play against him. Anytime you're playing against someone that puts a lot of pressure on you, you gotta be willing to risk a lot of chips, and that's uh, it's hard to do. That would make a lot of sense when you get your flop, that was a fun. I flopped an open-ended straight draw. I felt like Chris had a pair. I didn't think he had two pair. He hit two pair, and I thought I could get him off of his hand, or at least I had eight outs anyway, so I moved. On the flop, Jamie bet out a thousand, and Chris called with two pair. I actually knew Jamie before he won the World Series, and he didn't know what poker was at that point. Uh, he had never played a hand. We played a little bit and showed him a thing or two one night, and I guess he took it and got a lot more instruction and turned into a heck of a player. I'm all in. I call. Wow. I didn't think you had two pair. Nice hand. I don't see you got a bunch of outs there. I definitely need some help. Jamie turned to his blueberries, 
but what he really needed was an ace or a six to avoid being eliminated in fifth place. I popped two pair twice in a row. You did. I'll get some blueberry power, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I need all the help I can get. All right, here it comes. Oh, uh, no. Oh, it worked for the 12 million, it worked for 120,000. The queen of diamonds you. was not enough, and just Funny. like that, the field was down to four. It's good to see you. You too. I'm not upset about the way that I played. I didn't get many cards. I'm playing with the best players in the world. I didn't have very high expectations about winning this thing in the first place, but um, I had a lot of fun. And, you know, I was playing with all people that I really like, and I'm honored to be part of that group, so. I'm learning. I'm getting better every day. Johnny Chan and Doyle Brunson played a big pot earlier in the week when Johnny slow played aces before the flop. Doyle made a pair of tens on the river, but that wasn't enough as Johnny scooped a huge pot. The blinds were up to three and six hundred. Chris Moneymaker was first to act. Johnny was on the button. He limped in with his aces and the trap was set. In my head, with Doyle at pocket aces, had the button, I, I limb in. I figure uh, Doyle's my raised it. Sure enough, he raised it. Playing with Doyle Brunson is a dream for me. When I sit with Doyle Brunson, I feel like I'm sitting with an unbelievable legend. So I just smooth call on my aces, and flop comes rainbow. He checked. I knew I had drawn dead almost. So I check along. I had a 10-9. I was just actually trying to pick the blinds up. And the flop came uh, jack 7-4, I believe. And I checked, and he checked. I figured he's gonna bet on 4th Street. My prediction was right, he bet on 4th Street. And the next card was a, a, a nothing card, I think a three. And so I bet at the pot and Johnny called me. Doyle rivered a pair of 10. Sure enough, he bet again. He fired the second barrel. Go on. Johnny Chan moved all in. I was close to a dollar and a half here. And the last card was a 10, uh, which made me two 10s. I actually thought the two 10s were the best hand, and I bet him, and he moved in on me. So 
something about this thing. I don't know what it is. I studied it a long time because I knew something was abnormal about this hand. If Doyle called and lost, he'd be the short stack and in danger of elimination. We got 15,000 there? Or more. Huh? About 17. 15. Fourteen, fourteen, five, fourteen, eight. They might have to get broke with this. Like an eight and a nine to me, John. And uh, I moved more than on on the river, and he he folded, and I won that nice nice spot. He was in pretty bad territory there. You know, if that ten had been an eight, he'd been broke. Welcome back to Poker After Dark. Two of poker's biggest names battled yet again. This time, Johnny Chan got the best of Doyle Brunson when Johnny moved all in on the flop with middle pair and ended up making a straight when Doyle had top pair. Let's take a look and see how that hand went down. A bit later on, the blinds were up to six and 1200. Chris Moneymaker was on the button. Johnny was the short stack at this point. He called Doyle's raise to 3,000 from the small blind. Chris Ferguson bowed out and these two legends would have a rematch. Johnny flopped queens, but Doyle flopped aces. Doyle Brunson, he, you know, I've never got the chance to play with him except for on one tournament. It was a sit and go speed tournament. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this opportunity to play with him. You know, he's the legend. He's the guy that, you know, probably is the reason we're all sitting here. I mean, he started this long before I even was born. I think Johnny's one of the best uh, no limit hold'em players in the world. I think it's evidenced uh, by the fact that he's won 10 bracelets at the World Series. He's won two championships, two world championships, and numerous other things. I've played cards with him for 30 years. Johnny's one of the top players in the world. All that said, Johnny was faced with a bet of 6,000. He moved all in. Let me guess how much it is if you want to tell me. About 14. Twelve four. Let me know. Get the best hand by. Doyle called and showed Johnny this time he had the pair of aces. <clears throat> uh, 
That 10 gives Johnny Chan a straight yeah, and a card. flush draw. Any yeah, picture yeah. card or spade, Johnny wins the pot. Any picture card be okay? Any picture card and you can call the doctor. Don't fail on this. <laughs> wow. Sorry. The river gave Johnny Chan a flush, and once again, Doyle Brunson had been bested by his longtime friend. Well, you know, I've played with Johnny for years. Uh, he's a tough competitor. Uh, the big pot that we played, you know, I was I had two aces, he had two queens. There's nothing you can do about those situations. Uh, he caught a spade and then another spade made a spade flush. But, uh, you know, Johnny's tough. Uh, we played a lot of poker together, and uh, I felt like I had him on that hand, which I did, but, you know, that's poker. You know, he, he drew out. With the blind still at six and 1200 and Johnny Chan on the button, it was time for round three between he and Doyle Brunson. It just becomes a battle of wits. You, you have to, uh, there's no set formula. You, you, that's what makes a poker player, being able to adjust to your style to what your opponent's doing. Your opponent dictates what you do. Johnny flopped a pair of kings. Doyle flopped a pair of sixes. All in. Cool. Okay, let's go. Maybe I'll draw it on you. The clubs would be the interesting card now. Huh? Five. Okay, so five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't too interesting there. Johnny turned two pair, which meant Doyle was down to a six to stay alive. All right, gentlemen. The river was no help, and just like that, the legend Doyle Brunson had been eliminated, and Johnny Chan was now the chip leader. And Doyle is one of the poker legends of all time. So I, I give that man a lot of respect. In three-handed play, the blinds were up to one in 2,000, Chris Ferguson found himself in the big blind on the short stack. I go all in. Since I'm going to be playing against players that I don't play against regularly, what I have to do is figure out how they're playing very quickly. I need to figure out what kind of strategies they're using as quickly as possible. Since these are all world champions, they're actually going to all be playing very well. So I don't expect to find any gaping holes in anyone's game over here. I'm just going to be trying to make the best decisions possible and trying to figure out what they're thinking at all times. Chris called Johnny's ace eight with king five. 21 seven. Okay. Yeah, 21 seven. Yep. Uh, 21 nine, I'm sorry. 21. That's what I have. Johnny moved in on me from the small blind for all my chips, 22,000. 
And, you know, with the King-5, sounds like a horrible hand. But, you know, I'm, uh, you know when, it's, when it's heads up and the guy moves in uh, on you from the small blind, it's actually a very close decision. It might have been a very small, small negative decision. Obviously, if I knew he had Ace-8, I would have folded. I thought there might be a chance he's trying this with an 8-9, 10-9, something like this. And I would have had the best hand. It uh, can't be that bad a play to, to call there. Uh, at that point, it's just, you know, I'm you know, willing to gamble at that point. That's not looking good. Oh, wow. Now I don't even get back to our spades. Oh, my best card's like a jack or a ten. King of five. Yes. So good. That's it. That's it. Chris. Nice playing with you. My pleasure. Didn't work, though. Lines were at one in 2000, and Johnny Chan was on the button. I love to play hats up. I've had plenty of history with Johnny Chan. Uh, Johnny Chan's really one of the players that got me started in poker uh, in the movie Rounders. He was featured in that movie, and uh, he's one of the reasons I started playing. Uh, the first tournament I ever played, which was the World Series in 2003, I got to sit next to him for two days. Uh, the first day, he beat me up pretty good. Uh, second day, I said I wouldn't even let that happen. And he's a fierce competitor, he's scary at the table. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, get the upper hand on him that time. We faced each other twice since, and he's got me both times, uh, both with the same hand, pocket eights for ace queen. He's got uh, the pocket eights on me, and both times they held up. So uh, he's on me right now, but uh, he's a heck of a player, and I'm just privileged to sit down and play with him. And my last hand with Chris was the most exciting hand that I play in a long time. I hit the button, and uh, Chris had the big blind. I had the 1,000, and he had 2,000. So I looked down, I had six, eight a heart, and I raced to make it 5,000 to go. He called it, flop, flop comes, queen, six, five. He checked. I bet 7,000. Just race me eight more thousand, make it fifteen thousand straight. My instinct tells me he doesn't have a a good hand. Race. Race. Morning. Falling. I figured at that time my sixes was was the best hand. So anytime you have the best hand, you're supposed to protect your hand. So I move all in. It's almost unanswerable. It's something that's inside the player. It's an innate ability to feel when the right time is to do a certain thing. Uh, you can't explain it to somebody. It's just something that's there. I think it's uh, something that you're born with. I like to dictate my opponent. I, I, li I like to make my opponent do what I want them to do. Can't make him go all in every time they, they make a call or make a bet or you make him bet certain amount just just following my step basically. You really have to know where your opponent is and you have to study your opponents and know if they're on draws or if they're on made hands. 
and uh, you do that by betting and following betting patterns and seeing where people are calling in different positions and how they play their hands, how they play their draws, and uh, you know you just try to avoid falling into traps. And uh, these guys are cagey; they'll set traps, so you just got to set traps back. When I made the raise, um, you know, I, I didn't think he was that strong. I, you know, when he made it the $7,000 bet, I thought I was going to win it right there. He came back over the top, and uh, you know, I figured I knew I had eight outs, and uh, I figured I might potentially have one, two more. I thought my seven or eight might be good. It's just crazy, but you know, I just didn't think he was that strong. I'm gonna gamble with you, Johnny. We'll go for it. And Chris thought for a long, long time, and he caught it. I got two sixes, what you have? Two sixes? I got a seven, eight. I'd like to see a, I see an eight up there, that'd be nice. <laughs> Wouldn't mind seeing a four. This felt lucky. Okay, now you pair the board. Any picture cards, okay. Chris Any couldn't bear card. to look, and neither could Johnny. Moneymaker needed a four, seven, or a nine to double up and stay alive, or Johnny Chan would go home with $120,000. Both players went to their neutral corners to wait for the river card. Victory for Johnny Chan. Until now, he had an open end strict draw and went over card. And um, he's, he's, he got 11 outs twice, which is tw 22. It's almost even money shot, and, uh, and nothing come. You know, I hate calling off $40,000. Um, my last 40000 on a draw, it's not something I generally do. Uh, it's been a long day. Uh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake at the wrong time. That's part of poker. You learn from your mistakes. You know, Johnny, I can't pick up anything on Johnny. I've tried, you know, he was the one guy I didn't really, really didn't want to face heads up because I've played him four times and I've yet to pick anything up on him. You know, if I had that one back, I'd take 40,000 to his 80,000, but I thought, you know, I knew I had a good, good chance to uh, catch and if I win that hand, I could take down the match uh, pretty handily. Uh, it didn't work out this time. I uh, learned my lesson, uh, just got a little tired. Here I am, I'm the champ. Welcome back to Poker After Dark. I'm Shauna Hyatt. I'm here with this week's winner, Johnny Chan. Johnny, walk me through that last hand. Were you surprised with Chris's open-ended straight draw? Uh, well, when I bet the 7,000 on the flop, he raised me 8,000. Mm -hmm. My instinct tells me the guy's weak, and, and I feel like 260 was the best hand, so I move on it. Good morning. All in. Took, you know, Chris uh, got almost an even money shot to, to, right. to make a call, so he thought a long time and decided to call. It was almost even money. And uh, nothing shows up, and uh, here I am. I'm the champion. There you go. Yeah. What about Chris made you think he was weak? Instinct. <laughs> My instinct tells me he's weak. I love it. What was it like sitting down at the table with all those World Series champs? Oh, I love to play with those guys day in and day out. That's my dream. Instead of playing with a guy from the internet, I never played poker, never played a hand of poker with them before, so it's tough to play. But, but you know, it's the same old bunch of day in and day out. And I, I, I love it. 
Good. Well, you seemed very confident when the table got down to three. Yeah, I, I like shorthanded. I like I told you earlier. I mean, I know how they play. Did you adjust your strategy then? A little bit, a little, mm -hmm. you know, switch gear up a little faster. I mean, like that hand ace egg. Normally, I don't go on in with ace egg off suit, and that was the, the time to make a move. Any plans for the hundred twenty grand? Hey, that's the uh, more money for the for the kids to go to college. There you go. Johnny Chan showed why he's a two-time World Series champ when he beat five other champs and won this week's table. Stay tuned Monday when six new poker pros will compete for a $120,000 winner take all. I'm Shauna Hyatt. You've been watching the director's cut of NBC's Poker After Dark. Okay, just try it before I just like do for real. Okay. <laughs> this time Johnny Chan got Chris Ferguson and Carlos Mortensen tangled when Chris had Ace Jack and Carson. When I started reading in the beginning, I was like, oh my God, how am I gonna say this all at once? With Chris Ferguson, with Chris Ferguson, with Chris. <laughs> oh, that's the one I'm doing, okay. Chris Ferguson and Carlos Mortensen tangled when Chris had Ace Jack. Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, wait. I I can hear I can I I know it, but it's a, like I'm not. Chris Ferguson and Carlos Mortensen tangled when Chris had Ace Jack and Carlos had Pocket Queens. When the flop came, flop came. Oh, am I doing that one again? No. Okay. Look, I'm perspiring. Not Will Brunson will try to hang on to his lead and take a, take a step closer to, oh, sorry. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> sorry, we're down to heads up between 2003 World Series champ Chris Moneymaker and two-time World Series champ Johnny Chan. Right. Do it again. This time Johnny Chan got the best of Doyle Brunson when Johnny moved all in on the flop with a middle pair and a gut, gut shot straight draw. Oh, I like that. I'm glistening. Guts, uh, gut shot straight draw, that's good. When the flop came with an ace, Carlos almost lost. On the very first. <laughs> I need water. <laughs> I need some water. <laughs> okay, and I promise I'll get you guys out of here. The, the, the more was coming up. Was I supposed to say the next step? <laughs> Don't fail me now. Good night. Thank you.